Hey everyone, Steve here with Class A Surfacing. Um, I revisited the gyroid because um, the flaw that I've noticed in every gyroid ever that uh, I've seen everybody modeling is that it lacks tangency across the external boundaries and I wanted to find a way to get that tangency. So um, I went through and started the same way as far as with the extrusion and the only thing is between this gyroid and the prior gyroid that I made is instead of using an arc I ended up using splines. Uh, let's do this. So I'm gonna go in and check out this arc. If I look at one of these arcs you'll see it's just point to point and a radius. Coming across this boundary going either this way or this way there's no tangency so that in and of itself is going to uh, be an issue for applying any sort of tangency at this corner boundary now put six of those together and you end up with an impossible scenario let me close that so the first thing that I did is change the curve or curve type that I have driving everything and in this case I just did a through point spline constrained this top face. You see those are my constraints. I did adjust the magnitude to squash it down a little bit but I have it going a tangent in this direction, tangent in this direction at those points. So this is going to allow tangency um, and a certain level of additional smoothness that can occur at these corners now. So then I did what I did before. I did my extrusions and then I set up a bunch of datum planes. Okay, the datum planes are offset out, as you can see, and I created a single intersection through those extrusions. So if I turn those off, you'll see those intersection curves. Let me go ahead and hide the cube for clarity's sake. That's set up exactly the same way as before. So as you can see, I have my intersection curves here on those extrusions. Now with that, we'll go ahead and hide these now, I created some bridge curves. Those bridge curves come from one extrusion to the next extrusion or intersection and as you can see it sort of trims off those corners. And the reason why I did that is because when I create this fill I can now generate my fill surface at this point it'll be tangent across the boundary at least this length. If I were to drive these curves out further then I could make these corners a lot smaller. I just got lazy. Um, I'm one of those guys that once I solve the issue I I know how to do it. It's not a problem. So, um, But if you want to you can drive these curves out further and capture more of the uh, shape through these points out here. Um, but I just I stopped because if I if I push the plane out any further into the intersection it would have been intersecting um, other curves and it just would have been a mess of it's not in the mood to deal with it anyway um, so you can shrink this corner up a bit so those are now placed in and then when I go in and create my studio surface to fill in those corners I can impose tangency here I can impose tangency here and I can impose tangency here now if you look it does pinch up whoops sorry wrong button it does pinch up quite considerably in this corner because I am basically going to uh, create this through a point you'll notice I have a primary curve one primary and two guide curves here and here I use the arc length most of these will let you get away with by parameter but uh, arc length uses um, and it's a bit more tolerant as far as what it does parameter likes to be a bit more precise so I wanted a little bit more tolerant um, uh, modeling parameters here on this surface now if I look at the control polygon of this thing let me pick my surface here show my poles you can see it's fairly clean right? it doesn't look too abhorrent it's nicely balanced it fills in all the little areas and patches as it's supposed to right because everything is always parametrically rectangular always now if I just turn this off and I go to this guy you'll see that I get a bunching there we go 
of those control points coming in, but you can see the parameterization of those control points is very smooth. And it does come to a point, and you know, I've, I've made a videos before of not modeling to a point, but sometimes it's just, you just have to, like in this case, you just have to. So here, I have my tangency, 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 and the result is a perfectly smooth set of surfaces. Let me go ahead and turn on that last one. And everything is tangent across all. And then at this point, you would just sew it. You just come in here, do a sew. And then do your patterns however you're going to do those patterns. So there's my, there's my sill surface. Um, but again, if I measure across this boundary and I measure across this boundary, these surfaces are all going to be within um, whatever specified tolerances you have for your modeler, um, tangent and uh, positional. So that is uh, the easiest way that I found to create your um, fully tangent gyroid surfaces across these boundaries. So that way when you create the stacks of these things, right? because the purpose of these eventually is to, you're gonna take and create a stack that runs up and over, and as you create that pile, it's gonna be smooth across these boundaries in all directions. It won't come to a, a focal or a sharp point, except for right in that local, that instantaneous moment right at these corners. But that's it. Other than that, um, this is the uh, cleanest, easiest way of making sure you get tangency across all boundaries and you minimize the errors to these tiny little points. Anyway, um, just had to beat that, beat that up again. Hope you learned something. If you did, like the video, uh, share with your friends. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And uh, thanks.